President Trump pressured Congress on Sunday to end a government shutdown that reached its second day amid deep uncertainty over whether Democrats and Republicans could soon break an impasse to restore federal funding. Trump praised Republicans for fighting for our military and safety at the border, while he said Democrats just want illegal immigrants to pour into our nation unchecked. If stalemate continues, he wrote on Twitter. Republicans should use the nuclear option to change the rules of the Senate and try to pass a long-term spending bill with a simple majority. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers were set for another tense day, with the start of the work week for many federal employees less than 24 hours away. The Senate will gavel into session at 1 p.m. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Archi, has vowed to take up a new spending plan by Monday morning or sooner, that would keep government open through February 8. But the proposal would not contain a solution for dreamers, undocumented immigrants who were brought into the United States as children, raising doubts about whether the plan will win enough support to pass. In the past, Trump has made arguments similar to his statement Sunday urging Senate GOP leaders to change long-standing Senate rules requiring 60 votes for most legislation. McConnell has said he is not open to such a change. Congressional leaders in both parties refused to budge publicly from their political corners Saturday on the first day of the shutdown, avoiding direct negotiations and bitterly blaming each other in speeches. Trump joined the fray with a series of charged tweets. Shutdown dynamics highlight the state of politics on Trump's anniversary. But glimmers of a breakthrough were evident by late in the day, as moderate Democrats and Republicans began to rally behind a new short-term funding proposal to reopen the government through early February. That plan could include funding for storm-ravaged states, reauthorization of the Children's Health Insurance Program and an implicit agreement to hold votes at some point in the coming weeks on a bipartisan immigration deal, according to senators involved in the discussions. He wants to keep the government shut down until we finish a negotiation on the subject of illegal immigration, McConnell said of his Democratic counterpart, Senate Minority Leader Charles E. Schumer, D.N. Why? McConnell repeated himself shutting down government over illegal immigration. The moderate senators, meanwhile, are trying to reach a deal on immigration in hopes that, should a three-week spending accord be approved, McConnell would allow it to come up for a vote alongside a longer-term spending plan. Democrats, however, remained intensely opposed to McConnell's approach, unsure he would agree and frustrated by Republicans' refusal to meet their demands on immigration while the government is closed. At issue for Democrats is the fate of thousands of young immigrants eligible for protection from deportation under the Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Trump canceled the program in September, and it is set to expire in March. Lawmakers are scrambling to enact a legislative solution. Democrats also questioned the ability of the negotiating group to reach an agreement that can pass the Senate and House and also earn Trump's approval. The conversation that needs to take place is the conversation at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, where the President of the United States brings in the four leaders from Congress, said Senator Thomas R. Carper. D. Dell. Dot. We can come up with the best compromise in the world. The key is how to get it through the House and the way to do that is for the President to provide the air cover that he has not so far provided. McConnell and Schumer did little in public Saturday besides trade insults and brief speeches on the Senate floor or on television. There were no substantive talks between the two leaders. The real effort at bridging the divide was that bipartisan collection of roughly 20 senators from the less ideological wings of their respective caucuses. That group met and was trying to advance a deal that would open the government for three more weeks and set up a series of votes on competing immigration proposals. Still, several Senate Republicans said that McConnell was in no mood to give Schumer any assurances to open up the government. Senator Susan Collins, Republican Maine, and Senator Joe Manchin III, D.W. Virginia, are leading the moderate group with Senators Jeff Flake, Republican Arizona, and Lindsey O. Graham, R.S.C. 
both of whom have worked closely with Schumer on immigration issues in the past, serving as go-betweens for the two parties. The duo shuttled back and forth between Schumer's and McConnell's offices on the second floor of the Capitol trying to forge a political peace, but they left for dinner shortly after 6 p.m. With no solid agreement with either leader, it is unclear whether there is enough bipartisan support for the immigration proposal being floated by the moderates, or for one that Senate conservatives are also drafting. And the possibility of no resolution to the immigration standoff before the DACA deadline remained. So far, Trump, McConnell and House Speaker Paul D. Ryan Republican Wisconsin have refused to consider Democrats' demands until there is a bipartisan agreement to reopen the federal government. Senate Democrats shut down this government, and now Senate Democrats need to open this government back up, Ryan said in a midday speech. Trump, who spent the day at the White House, weighed in on Twitter. Democrats are far more concerned with illegal immigrants than they are with our great military or safety at our dangerous southern border. They could have easily made a deal but decided to play shutdown politics instead. Hashtag we need more Republicans in 18 in order to power through mess. House Republicans are unusually united that the shutdown is Democrats' fault. In a bid to move past their political squabbling. The moderate senators met for a second day in Collins's office. She led a similar bipartisan group in working to resolve the last shutdown in 2013. Moderates are trying to find a pathway forward, Manchin said. Everything you need to know about the shutdown. Democratic leaders made their case for blaming Republicans for the shutdown, as thousands of women gathered along the mall in Washington to protest Trump's first year in office. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Democrat California, stood at the Capitol and pointed to a poster depicting a Trump tweet from last May calling for a good shutdown. Happy anniversary, Mr. President, Pelosi said. Your wish came true. You wanted the shutdown? The shutdown is all yours. Trump, who marked the first anniversary of his inauguration on Saturday, canceled plans to visit his resort in Palm Beach, Florida, for a weekend of celebrations. His scheduled trip to the World Economic Forum in Switzerland this coming week was also up in the air, according to an aide. At the White House, a phone line for comments directed callers to voicemail with a message slamming Democrats. Unfortunately, we cannot answer your call today because congressional Democrats are holding government funding including funding for our troops and other national security priorities, hostage to an unrelated immigration debate. Due to this obstruction, the government is shut down, a woman's voice said on the message. The strong case that Trump is a big reason the government is shut down. The White House said it supports the plan for funding through February 8 eliminating a potentially significant hurdle to its enactment. Yet the simmering tensions between the Trump administration and Schumer who said Saturday that negotiating with the president was like negotiating with Jell-O, underscored the delicacy of the moment. Schumer and Trump had met privately on Friday afternoon, giving some lawmakers optimism that their deliberations would advance a deal to avoid a shutdown. Schumer left the meeting buoyed, telling others that Trump seemed willing to strike a deal on a days-long funding extension in exchange for concessions such as border wall funding. But by midnight, he complained to his members that Trump had suddenly reneged on the possibility. The White House told a different story. Briefing reporters at the White House on Saturday, Budget Director Mick Mulvaney disputed Schumer's claim that he offered Trump his desired border wall funding during their meeting. Mr. Schumer has to up his game and be more honest with the President of the United States if we are going to be seeing progress, Mulvaney said. Schumer spokesman Madhouse fired back on Twitter that Mulvaney, who was not present for the meeting, was not telling the truth about what happened. Democrats pushed for a shutdown despite Trump for his accomplishments. White House Director of Legislative Affairs Mark Short argued to reporters, Their reaction is, because we can't beat them, what we're going to do is shut down the government, he said in a news briefing Saturday. There was scattered and acrimonious activity on the House and Senate floors. McConnell sought to bring up the four-week spending bill that failed Friday night. Democrats blocked the attempt.
Democrats asked to vote on a bill guaranteeing federal workers their back pay for the period of the shutdown, McConnell objected, saying they deserve a full funding bill. Senator Ron White, or the ranking Democrat on the Senate Finance Committee who objected to McConnell's attempt to revive the short-term bill, questioned McConnell's embrace of the GOP proposal to extend funding of the Children's Health Insurance Program and highlighted the discord that defined the day. He sounded like Marion Wright Edelman last night, the founder of the Children's Defense Fund, with his newfound interest in the Children's Health Plan, White said in an interview. It sounds like I'm listening to Ted Kennedy talk about health. I've never heard of this being a priority, for Republicans. In the House, lawmakers prepared for a possible deal by debating a special rule allowing them to consider any bill that passes the Senate on the same day. The debate evolved into a shouting match over displaying disparaging photos of other members, such as Schumer, on the floor.